Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to another Audi RS3 DIY video. Now for those of you that have been supporters of the channel for a while, you'll know that I've been accessorizing my car with some forged carbon fiber goodies. Things like the front lip, the side skirts, the spoiler, even some front canards. But one piece has been eluding me for over 12 months. But today that is all about to change because I finally received my forged carbon fiber mirror caps. That's right, we're gonna install them. I'm gonna take you through the process and we're also gonna install some sequential indicators in the wing mirrors themselves. So if you've ever wondered how hard it is to change the mirror caps on your Audi, then stick around because this video is for you. Okay, let's talk about the products. Let's start with the forged carbon mirror caps here. This is the unit. It's from a company called Premium Deutsch Carbon, which sounds pretty European until you realize that the postage is coming from Penang in Malaysia. But despite that, um, the quality actually seems pretty good. It's really thick and sturdy. I suspect they've based this on an original mirror cap and actually just laid the forged carbon on top. But that works for me. That hopefully means the fitment should be pretty good. Cost wise, I paid about 400 Australian dollars for these. So that's those. Um, and in terms of the sequential indicators, uh, they've just got their protective covering on at the moment. They've actually got a bit of a tinted lens and then a whole row of LEDs that sit inside of here. So those will be the sequential indicators that sit inside the wing mirrors. Now, truth be told, I scored these off, uh, I think it was AliExpress. It cost me about 30 Australian dollars. So fingers crossed they're okay, but really it's a simple piece of kit. Um, so I don't foresee any problems. Now in terms of fitting these two items, obviously we need to get into the mirror caps, which requires a few tense moments because we have to remove the glass to be able to get behind it. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today and I'll walk you through it. All right guys, let's crack into it. Oh, before we get started, you haven't subscribed, right? If not, make sure you smash that button. Thanks. All right, let's get into the job. Uh, in terms of tooling, all you're gonna need is a um, T10, what do they call it, hex bit. So that's really the only tool. You may need a pry tool, like one of those plastic trim removal things, but I've actually found it's easier with your fingers. You've got a bit more sensation and feeling. So the first thing you need to do, obviously just um, swing the mirror around so it's easier to work on. And then push the glass so that the outer edge is sort of closest to you as much as possible. And basically what we're gonna need to do is pop the glass off the little um, retaining clips that sit behind it. The easiest way I've found is to actually put your fingers in right behind it like that. And then just really gently start applying pressure outwards and it's a little bit nerve wracking because if this goes wrong, well, you know what happens. Okay, that is the side of it released. And then kind of just work your way around a little bit. It'll make more sense once it's off as to what's holding it in place. There we go, and that is the top. So now the glass is loose in one piece, thankfully. Um, and we can sort of start pulling it out. Okay, at the back on this side, you'll see a little plug and you've also got two wires on the other side, which are your heating elements. So the plug for the side assist just has a normal release mechanism. You just squeeze that down and that just pops right off. The heating element ones, you just need to pull the connector off the sort of spade clip and important with this one is note which wire is on the top and which wire is on the bottom. So the top one for me is the black and blue and the bottom one is a black and red or black and brown. So there we go guys, that is the mirror. Um, just so you can see it, that's the little, uh, the little plug for the side assist. You've got your two little prongs here for the heating element. 
These two fingers here are sort of guide assist. They go into little brass slots inside the wing mirror assembly. And then you've got the clips all the way around here that hold it in place. So that's what you're trying to get off. With the mirror assembly removed, you have, I think it's four little T10 bolts that you need to remove. One down the bottom here, one around the side. I think there's a little one tucked in the back there. And somewhere at the top here, there is another one. So remove those first. Okay, with those four bolts removed, we need to now work at removing this thin plastic trim, which is kind of the, it's not the leading edge, it's the back edge of the wing mirror, I guess. And it really, there's no easy way. You've kind of just got to finagle a whole bunch of clips out and just kind of work your way. I found working from the inside first. There we go, there's one clip gone. Okay, and you only want to get it just a little bit loose, just so it's kind of hanging off the edge here. And then there's one more screw to remove and it's right in the middle of the mirror motor. Again, it is a T10. Really long one there. Um, pretty easy to identify when we're putting it back. And then that motor, that central motor just kind of pops out. And at this stage, you can kind of just leave it hanging here. We don't need to unplug it. You can if you want to, I suppose. And then we're gonna remove the, keep removing this plastic trim around the edge. And that is also gonna sort of hang down. So just work your way around and you'll notice that that just pops off and just gently let it hang down by the side of the car. Now you have full access to the interior of the wing mirror. The next thing we need to do is worry about the side assist light. Now, obviously if you don't have it, you can ignore this step. But for those of us that do have it, um, there's a little clip that's facing out, which you just need to push in. And then the whole light, and it's a little square thing, actually pops out this way and pops away from the mirror. And you can see that come out here. From there, we can unplug it and just set it aside. We'll have to reuse that in the new mirror. And finally, uh, we actually are just gonna take the top mirror cap off. Uh, it kind of slots in from the front to the back, if that makes sense. So give it a little bit of a wiggle. It'll start releasing from the sides. And there's a few little tabs on top which you can help loosen it. There we go. So underneath, there's two little tabs that are sort of holding it in place. Push those out of the way and the whole thing will move back. And there we go. So that is the factory one off. And I guess uh, to show you, this is the little um, arm that kind of holds it in. So you need to pull it away in that direction. Okay, set that one aside. Final thing we need to do, I know I said the previous thing was final, is actually to remove the indicator light. And that's just held in with one more T10 screw at the back. Um, you physically don't need to take it out all the way to remove it, but because we need to put it into the new one, it's easier to remove it all the way now. Okay, and then this light is actually held in by a bunch of tabs all the way around the back here. Maybe this is where a pry tool actually might come in handy. Okay, with your pry tool in hand, just loosen those clips away. Okay, and with all those clips loose, that will just slide out. There is a plug on top, pull that one out. There we go. And that is one factory LED uh, indicator for the wing mirror removed. Okay, now with everything disassembled, it's just a matter of putting it all back together with all the new parts. So start off with your uh, indicator, if you're doing it, if not, ignore this step. Uh, plug it in first. Pins didn't quite line up on that one, which is surprising because I've actually already done the other side and they went in fine. So it just took a little bit of finagling to get that in. Okay, so that is plugged in. We can slot that back into place and it's just a matter of lining up the tabs 
and then gently squeezing that down into place like that. And that is all snug and buttoned up. Don't forget to replace that screw on the edge that we took out of the factory one and that just helps hold it into place. And remember you're dealing with plastics so don't over tighten the screws because it'll make that horrible cracking sound and something will break and everyone will be unhappy. All right, that is that done. Now, before we put the new um, forged carbon mirror caps, it's worthwhile just making sure that your um, side assist light actually uh, fits in there properly. Like I said, I have done the other side and it did require a little bit of shaving around this hole. <gasps> That's what she said. It wasn't quite an exact fit. So again, put it in from the front, just like that. And the sort of angled edge first, and then see if you can snug that down. And I think we're gonna have the same issue on this side as we did on the other, because it doesn't quite line up. Now, depending on, bad, on how bad your OCD is, uh, you might be okay with this, or you might not, like me. Uh, so I'm gonna grab a small file. I'm just gonna file down some of the inner edges, making sure not to actually touch or file any of the outer edges, because obviously those scratches will be obvious. But what it is, is it's just where the sort of epoxy has laid down and it's a little bit thick and where you need a sharp edge, it's kind of rounded it off. And so we can just sharpen that up with the file and then these will sit in there quite snug. Moments later. Just do a little bit at a time, then test fit, then adjust it, then test fit, then adjust it. But I think now I've got it to a point. Yeah, see, that's pretty nice. That just sits in there nice and flush. So I'm pretty happy with that. The securing tabs at the back, if you can see this guy right here, that hooks in nicely. So you will have to do some work. The fitment isn't 100% um, from this point of view. We'll see how we go when we put it on the car. So take your um, side assist light out because that has to go in after the actual wing mirror has been put in place. And then it is a case of kind of manhandling this thing back on. And don't forget that you've got this little hook. So you need to come from the back and then kind of clip it forward. But at the same time, there's clips at the side here that need to go in as well. Now, when you come to this part of the mirror here, so the, the sort of um, corner closest to the vehicle, you are going to have to sort of flex the bottom shell into place. There it goes. <clears throat> For some reason that doesn't just sort of sit on there nicely. All right, I think that is in. All the tabs are secured at the top here. They've popped into place. This sits right. Now, don't freak out when you see a bit of a gap along the edge here because when we put the actual front frame back in place and we screw it into place, it all kind of pulls it together. So don't pass judgment on it straight away. It does come into place quite nicely. So I'm quite happy with that. All right, once you've got that in place, it's time to pop your side assist in. Uh, it goes in from the outside and then the front facing bit pops in first and then the back bit just clips in like that. If you wanted to be extra secure at this stage, you could put a dab of um, like silicon or something like that just against there. Something that's relatively easy to remove if you change your mind. Um, and that would hold it in place as well. But the clips should do their job. And don't forget as well that it is plugged in. So it's never gonna fall out and go onto the road and you're gonna lose it. The plug will hold it in place. So um, speaking of which, <coughs> I should have done the plug first because now I can't reach it. Plug it in first, Alex. That's the way. And you can put it back in. Beautiful. Really happy with that. Oh, they look so good, they look so good. All right, don't get excited, we've got more to do. From here on in, uh, yeah, I think the next thing is actually the frame. Uh, importantly, you need to obviously send your wires through, make sure they come through the right holes. And 
then just kind of gently get that back into place. Okay, that's pretty much in. Then just replace all the screws that you took out before. And as I said, it'll actually tighten it up as you put those screws in, but don't, don't over tighten them, obviously. Um, and it will straighten up and look amazing. Now with the frame back in place, everything's secured, everything's not going anywhere and lined up nicely. So that's good. Time to put the center motor back into place. And it's a bit fiddly trying to line this one back up, but a little perseverance. Yep, so there's some guide tabs just to the right here. Line those up and that will sit in there nicely. Grab your long screw with the T10 hex bit attachment. Get that in there, tighten that up. And we are on the home stretch. All right, grab your mirror. Now these two parts here, um, they become important because they're gonna feed back into the brass fittings. So just line those teeth up with that. But first of all, don't forget to attach your plugs to the mirror. So blue and black on the top and the red and black one on the bottom. Then attach the plug. Then we line those two teeth up, get those in there and then give it a firm push. And we're in. And there we go guys, that is the forged carbon mirror cap with the sequential indicators installed on my RS3. You know what happens now. It's time for the glamour shots. So there we go guys, that is the install of my forged carbon fiber mirror caps on my Audi RS3 and of course the sequential turn signals in the wing mirrors as well. For me, this was the final piece of the puzzle for my forged carbon accessories and I think it ties in really well with the front splitter, the side skirts, the spoiler, the front canards and I'm really happy with the way the car is looking externally at the moment. Uh, I'll link Deutsch Carbon, or sorry, Premium Deutsch Carbon in the description below. Go check out their website. They've got lots of carbon fiber goodies for not just these types of cars, but lots of other cars as well. And of course the indicators, you can find them on AliExpress or eBay or any of those kind of stores. I hope this video helps you out in some way. If you're doing your own DIY, I hope you can see that it's not too difficult to tackle something like this. If you did enjoy it, smash that like button. And of course, as always, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell as well because we've got lots of good stuff coming up not only on the rs3 but also other car related videos coming right your way for now though that's it from me i'll see you next time <laughs>